The character creation is important in any MMORPG. Often you make choices that you won't be able to change anymore, like your class, race, or statistics. But in Guild Wars 2, it is important for very different reasons. You aren't just choosing your appearance and your profession, you are actually making a backstory for your character. This backstory will actually come into play in your personal story, shaping the early couple of story missions, making your character feel like an actual inhabitant of the world, not just some interchangeable chess piece. While all the stories will eventually converge in you facing the Elder Dragon, your early story missions are steeped in the culture, politics, conflict, and lore of the race you choose. With the game not limiting you in terms of stats and profession, as well as racial abilities being useful but not really game-breaking, the only thing that would influence your choice of race would be what kind of story do you want to experience. With that in mind, this is an overview of the personal story of each of the races. If you still can't decide which race to play on, maybe you would want to hear what kind of story they would tell. The human storyline plays like the start of many RPGs. They center around fending off bandits or learning secrets about your family. It shows the human nation of Krita as a typical medieval kingdom, but things are not always what they seem. Whether you choose noble, commoner, or street rat, you will find good and bad people in this social class. It also has the most number of callbacks to the original Guild Wars game, so if you were a fan of the first one, you will see a lot of references in the human storyline. The human storyline centers around protecting the populace from the many enemies that the crown has, from scheming nobles to evil circus masters. While it may play on some similar tropes, it is populated with a lot of memorable figures, some of which become recurring characters in the living story like Countess Anise and Lord Farron. If you ever wanted to see a TV series about the Greek state of Sparta, then the Char might be the race for you. With an emphasis on your warband over familial ties, the Char show you how life would be if you were a soldier first and a citizen second. There is also the fun RPG element of recruiting characters as your warband will consist of unlikely allies to form a ragtag group of adventurers united by a common goal. Some you save, some you seek out, some join you because it's convenient. The legion you join will dictate what kind of missions you will do, but all of them are focused on thwarting the machinations of the Flame Legion, usually culminating in big battles and big explosions. Some storylines are also morally ambiguous, where doing the right thing might leave you hated by everyone or leave you hating yourself. The Norn storylines are most similar to old CRPGs. You can even find references of them in the Shiver Peaks. It usually starts with a simple errand spiraling into something bigger. You get entangled in the plots of the Sons of Svanir, but while the Flame Legion just want to destroy those who stand in their way, the Sons of Svanir want to desecrate everything. There is a sense of urgency as they want to destroy the things that the Norn hold sacred to force Jormag, the Elder Dragon of Ice, upon them. There is a certain elegance to Jormag on how he saps the life out of everything until all that remains is to embrace the dragon's power. But that makes the stakes that much higher, making the Norn the most somber of all the storylines. There is also an emphasis on overcoming rivals, admitting mistakes you did in the past, and living with them. There is a growth to your character, from a rising star to someone who realizes that he must reconcile with his or her past before they can move forward with their legend. The Asura is the funniest of all the racial storylines. Primarily with how Asura culture works. If you were ever curious to see what a society of Sheldon Coopers would look like, then look no further. It's funny to see just how convoluted, condescending, and snarky the Asura can be. Drawing elements from comic books and science fiction, the Asura stories can get wacky at times, but the stakes are no less serious. It is all about the reckless usage of technological advancement for personal gain. Asura do take a more proactive approach to their problems, though. While other races focus on reacting to the plots created against them, the Asura is more of a roaring rampage of revenge. Someone has wronged you, so they must die. The Silvari storyline might be the strangest. While you might see the analogs in comparisons with the races with other fantasy races and worlds, there is no direct comparison for the Silvari. 
Much of the Silvari story is just wrapping your head around what they are. ArenaNet mentioned that they drew upon Arthurian lore in creating the Silvari, and it does show. Many of them emphasize chivalry, and some of the conflict centers on betrayal. There is also a strong emphasis on prophecy. Part of the campaign focuses on figuring out what you were created to do. The Nightmare Court serve as the primary antagonists for the Silvari, and their modus operandi is temptation. They want the Silvari to embrace pain, suffering, and cruelty to rebel against the teachings they deem limiting. Silvari also have the most number of oh no moments, revelations that could have disturbing implication in the world. While the prophecy of your Silvari is clear, that doesn't mean he or she is not afraid. Their task is monumental. Do they have the strength to embrace their destiny? So there you go. Each of the racial storylines is interesting but for different reasons. I hope this overview has given you an idea on what to expect with each race. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in Tyria real soon.